Erev Tov, Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live and uh, very interesting broadcast. Not it won't be very long tonight, but it will be interesting. Uh, we sit there, we saw this article came out on RT today. ISIS to launch a false flag chemical attack on Syrian Kurds and Russian military is watching closely. Yet again, we're finding in the news that uh, another false flag attack could be imminent. We reported that one just the other day. Uh, happening in Syria and all uh, to be to 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 justify yet another attack on Syria. Uh, this time here, the article goes on and tells us the Islamic State has launched production of toxic-filled mortar shells in the east of Deir Ezzor province. Russian military said on Wednesday the shells are filled with chemicals by a crew of 11 terrorists who received foreign training uh, and came to Syria specifically to carry out the false flag attack. And uh, so Russia is expecting that. And I will tell you, you know, if you listen to Seymour Hirsch, I watched him in one interview one time. He's an American journalist. He talks about Syrian sarin gas is so toxic that if they load it into a shell, they've only got 24 hours before they can launch it because it'll eat right through the casing of the, of the shell that they're going to launch. Well, when it comes to the ones that they're bringing in through ISIS, though, it's what they call the kitchen grade uh, sarin gas. Uh, of course, it could be a chlorine gas as well. And that is not quite nearly as toxic as that of what the Syrian government has. So therefore, they can load it up, get it ready, and it can still last for a few days before needing to launch that attack. Well, here's really the big bombshell, and that happens to be, we've reported this many times in the past, that the sarin gas attack of 2013 was fake. Uh, not to say that it didn't really happen, but it was not Syria that did it. We used Aaron Erdem to be able to back that up. Seymour Hirsch, other journalists as well that have come out and brought that out. Uh, but in this bombshell right here, Benghazi hero exposed a massive cover-up Brennan tried forcing survivors to sign an NDA to hide what really happened. You know, I even mentioned about the Benghazi movie there that they don't really show the truth of what the CIA was doing there, as we discovered from Seymour Hersh, the rat line, where they were smuggling sarin gas out of Libya through Turkey using Erdogan as the go-to man to get that into the hands of the terrorists inside of Syria. And Aaron Erdem backing that information up that uh, Seymour Hersh had reported on because he had gotten a leaked document. Uh, he's very cautious about what he did reveal, as he said, because if he really reveals too much, it could cost him his life. Yeah, that's exactly right. CIA, pretty funny about what you do say and what you don't say. It just depends on how much it can incriminate someone up the line. Uh, yeah, I kind of know that a little too well. Uh, but anyway, it says in here, just for the record, and this is a guy writing about uh, the, uh, uh, a man in here. He says, I have never trusted or had any respect for John Brennan. His, action, his actions for years are questionable, to put it mildly, and his voting for a Communist Party candidate should have been a career ending, especially in the intelligence game. But because of political agendas... It wasn't, and, and, and here we are, since President Trump has had John Brennan's security clearance revoked, a number of high-powered individuals have come to his defense. Well, of course. When it comes to the CIA, you have to remember, those guys are protecting somebody in the background. I know it all too well. And uh, believe me, they silence a lot of people or disrupt their lives. And I can give you some examples of that, including uh, some cases that you think are solved that are not. Uh, whether it be the Kennedy assassination, whether it be uh, Governor George Wallace and his shooting and everybody thinking it's Bremer that shot the guy. Hmm, interesting. Even when they show that close-up photo there of the gun right there at his stomach. But how in the world does his security guard get shot in the face? And also the Secret Service agent was shot as well. Bet you've ever wondered about that one? No, yeah, he was another patsy is what it was. But I won't go there. You come to Kansas, you might find out a lot more than you bargained for. All right, so as we move on down, though, he begins to talk here. He says, you remember Chris Peranto, the former Army Ranger and private security contractor who was part of the CIA team that fought back during the 2012 Benghazi terror attack. He's impossible to forget and someone I admire a great deal. He's flat out accusing Bremen of putting his politics before those in the field. 
Well, he does. He got into a little bit of a Twitter war, and because of that Twitter war exchange that he does there, it kind of releases some of that information that, uh, well, you know, to put it mildly, kind of give us a little bit of an insight on things that we had already been saying to you guys. Uh, the cat's kind of out of the bag now because Mr. Peranto, God bless his heart, because he fought a hard battle in order to be able to save save lives that he could. Uh, but yeah, like he said, they're trying to get him to sign this uh, confidentiality agreement there. In other words, keep your mouth shut. If you don't, we'll just hunt you down and kill you anyway. But it says here he shot back at Brennan on Twitter Thursday night, slamming him with accusations directly aimed at the former CIA director or caught lying to Congress or caught spying on presidential candidates or caught using their positions to influence the U.S. election or caught fabricating stories about attacks on U.S. personnel in Libya or providing weapons to ISIS militants in Syria. Should I go on, John Brennan? Nice to see someone call Brennan out for his treachery. Respect. Well, I have respect as well uh, for, for this man right here, for, for him being willing to, to, to bring out uh, the information that he says there. I want to just show you Chris's uh, Twitter page here. Tri uh, Chris at Peranto there. He's at, at Chris Peranto on Twitter there. Amazing man. Be willing to actually say that much. Yeah, they did supply weapons to ISIS. And from what we have been able to gather from Seymour Hirsch and Aaron Erdem, it was sarin gas included in that exchange. I remember watching the movie and I told my wife, I said, it's so laughable. I said, not the part that they don't show the fact that these uh, incredible former special force operation guys like Chris being a former army ranger uh, didn't do a great job trying to rescue these lives at great odds and risk to their own lives I said but the fact that they never really tell you what's going on yeah, they show the arms deals going on in the streets of Libya but I said hmm yeah they were smuggling weapons to ISIS militants in the rat line that Seymour Hirsch spoke about and you know the thing is it's not just Seymour Hirsch you know you've got people even like uh, right here I just pulled up videos just to see you have uh, Ron Paul on uh, the uh, Liberty Report also when President Trump was getting ready to launch an attack uh, which he did launch a, a missile strike on Syria for a nudge, uh, another alleged chemical weapons attack blamed on Bashar al-Assad, which is also a farce. It's nothing but a fake, fraud, fraud, phony, whatever you want to call it. Interview with Seymour Hirsch there uh, with... Uh, and that was on uh, RT's uh, special report there. I'm trying to remember what they call that right there. Um, well, I was going to share that with you there. Uh, but anyway, he was on RT's, uh, uh, on, on their report there, speaking about it. It's kind of an interesting thing where he does go in there. He, you know, he, doesn't, he doesn't just build up Bashar al-Assad as some saint. He said he's a man. He's, he's fighting for his own country. He said, sure, he does a lot of bad things. He said, everybody does. He said, you know, but look, America, we drop nuclear bombs on Hiroshima, and we think that we're somebody better than the next nation. No, we're not. But I just want to remind you in closing here, Aaron Erdem, let me just play you the clip right here of what he was saying to the Turkish parliament. He had already in the very beginning of his, his uh, hour disser dissertation before the Turkish parliament showed you how the uh, prime minister and the deputy prime minister, which one of those, by the way, was now President Erdogan, uh, were clearly in contradiction of who was sending, using the uh, secret service of Turkey, sending the sarin gas to the border to the ISIS militants. Well, it comes down into Erdogan's basket, by the way. But he says right here, listen to what he says. He said, as you all know, many children were murdered with sarin gas in the Middle East. There were various accusations about who uses sarin gas in our media. My question is about the Adnan's chief public prosecutor. Investigation case number 2013-351, number 2013-139, indictment 2012-120. Don't worry, the prosecutor is not from the parallel organization. Well, that's one way to inflame them, isn't it? Uh, with the government desires and actions in the region, it is stated by the prosecutor in this case, the raw materials for manufacturing sarin gas were delivered to the ISIS terrorist organization through contacts to this group's members. Hmm. 
Savcı bununla ilgili bir soru So the prosecutor initiated an investigation. Here, please look at this. I am showing this to you. Bununla alakalı bir tutuklama yapılmış. Bir operasyon. So the individuals who were, were suspected to have carried out the transportation were arrested and put in prison. Well, he goes on to say they were wiretapped, they were bugged. Uh, there were indictments. They were, like you said, put in prison, and then they, you know, they were told they had to they had to let them go. Somebody pulled some strings to get them out of jail free. And next thing you know, he says they're given all the sarin gas, all the bomb making materials that they needed, and they went into the side of Syria in 2013. Uh, they launched that sarin gas attack that killed hundreds of children as well. And Aaron goes on to say the blood of those children are on our hands. And we have been saying this over and over and over on Israeli News Live. We have been criticized every attack that we've been able to prove that it was not Bashar al-Assad that did it, uh, all the way even to the current ones when President Trump launched bombs against uh, Syria as a result of another alleged chemical attack uh, in Khan Shikun that never happened. Uh, what, it's not to say they didn't have a bomb dropped there, not to say there maybe wasn't chlorine gas used there, but it certainly wasn't by a a Syrian uh, warplane using a Russian-made bomb like a JDAM. No, that wouldn't have left a little dent in the road either. That would have left a crater in the road uh, because they were looking to destroy an entire building, not put a pothole out there for cars to drive around. I mean, come on, wake up, people. We got to really wake up. We're here to try to tell you the truth, and the whole world is trying to pull it down and, and cover the wool over your eyes. And while uh, they send the United States down the drain there and before you know it, they're going to have a war on our country and we're going to be in an awful situation. You know, so I want to tell you something. I just want to bring this up to your reminder one more time. Mr. Pronto, God bless this man for, for actually having the courage to stand up against John Brennan and saying what the CIA really did. And as I said again, I'll quote here what he says here in the article right here. As he goes on at the very end, now it's interesting. They caught lying to Congress or caught spying on presidential candidates. Let me tell you something. I knew presidential candidates, I knew uh, senators, I knew congressmen, you name it, involved in all kinds of these crimes that he's talking about right here. Yeah, CIA is involved in a lot of things you have no idea about. And as he goes on to say it there, uh, uh, excuse me, fabricating stories about tax in the U.S. personnel in Libya or providing weapons to ISIS. Uh, uh, wow, interesting. Fabricating stories about attacks on U.S. personnel in Libya or providing weapons to ISIS-backed militants in Syria. And maybe there's something that we've not been told. It doesn't surprise me a bit in the world. I've seen that many times. Seven years of doing this, I know exactly what the CIA is capable of doing. At any rate, though, it's kind of interesting, though, that... Uh, you know, Mr. Chris Pronto is brave enough to say that. And when he puts ISIS back militants and the weapons being provided to them, bingo, cha-ching, you just got the major cash stockpile right there. And what do you know? ISIS has got those weapons again, fixing to use them again. Another one of these false flag attacks there to justify another attack on Syria. Why? Because they want to bring it down because the gas pipeline is being built in Haifa, got to crush that country down and kill a whole bunch of more civilians. You guys want to know the truth? Listen, we'll tell you the truth here on Israeli News Live. We do appreciate, though, when you support the work that we do. It is a major risk, the things that we tell you at times. Visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org, and you can see, you can donate right there online. But more importantly, right now, recent articles right here on this side here. Got mine and my wife's picture over there from a few years back. December 1st, 2nd, that's this Saturday. Click on that rascal there. See about what's going on. If you don't have time to buy the ticket, we will sell the ticket at the door as well. You can come if you have problems financially, but you want to attend. Email us. We don't have much time left. Email us. Let us know you would like to attend uh, or come at the conference there. You can be at the door there. Uh, we have very tight security at this conference. So, you know, everyone will be checked as we bring people in about this. And uh, But we will share some of that type of information with you. Just like Chris Pronto said, he's right about the CIA. Hmm, you'd be surprised the things that go on. All in the name of national security. Be surprised how many of our own people are shot, murdered, and killed. And Kennedy was no different. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Don't forget, right down below, just below the 
monitor screen here you can see our address thank you for supporting this work those of you that have just recently have given we will be writing you right after this conference and we want to thank you as well for your kindness to keep this type of ministry moving on the air be getting also listen i'm going to take and share with you something i shared with our folks over there on patreon the other day i wanted them to be able to see this first but i'll be doing some traveling here in the next